In this video, we're going to learn about the challenge of selection in multi-objective optimization problems. If you want to learn more, you can watch my longer videos on evolutionary algorithms, multi-objective problems, and the hypervolume indicator. Let's compare two populations of solutions, one to a single objective problem and one to a multi-objective problem. Our single objective problem will be looking for a vehicle with only the fastest speed. Our multi-objective problem will be looking for a vehicle with the fastest speed and the best handling. This is a multi-objective problem. With the single objective problem on the left, it's obvious which one is the best solution. It's simply the solution with the best objective value. Now look at the multi-objective problem. Which one is the best? If we pick the solution which has the best value for objective one, you can see it doesn't have the best value for objective two. Then if we pick the solution with the best value for objective 2, we can see it doesn't have the best value for objective 1. In this case, neither solution is better than the other. Let's plot the population of solutions to the multi-objective problem for a better look. This is called a plot of the objective space. Because we are plotting the objective values, for each vehicle. Here we can see each glowing marker on the plot represents the objective values of solutions in our population. These have been labeled appropriately. On the x-axis, we have the speed of a vehicle. This means the further to the right a marker is, the faster the vehicle is. On the y-axis, we have the handling of a vehicle. This means the higher up a marker is, the better the handling is. After plotting these points, solution C stands out from the rest. It has a very low speed of 10 and a mediocre handling of 40. But what matters is that there are other solutions in the population which are better than solution C in both speed and handling. Let's have a closer look at this to see what I mean. Here, I have shaded in all of the objective space which is worse than solution B. This is referred to as the objective space which is dominated by solution B. And we can see that solution C is dominated by solution B. Already at this point, we can choose to get rid of solution C. It doesn't offer anything which solution B doesn't do better. But let's continue. Here, I've done the same for solution E. We can see that it also dominates solution C. Moving on to solution A, we can see it still dominates solution C. It matches solution C in handling but it offers much better speed. On to our final comparison, we can see solution D does not dominate solution C. But the same is true for the reverse. Solution C does not dominate solution D. We refer to these two solutions as being non-dominated because solution C has better handling than solution D, and solution D has better speed than solution C. However, because at least one solution dominates solution C, we can get rid of it from the population. This leaves us with four solutions. Now, if we shade in the area of the objective space which all remaining solutions dominate, we can see that no solutions are inside the shaded area. This means that all remaining solutions are non-dominated. So, which of these solutions is the best? The answer is 
We don't know. No solution completely dominates another, so no solution is completely better than another. Unless we have some existing information about some decision makers' preferences. For example, we may know the decision maker will not accept a vehicle design which offers handling lower than 40. Ultimately, we have to present this population of solutions to an expert. This is so they can make an informed decision using their knowledge of the problem. There are many approaches to reducing population sizes by selecting solutions based on some scheme, but these will still not tell you which solution is the best. This makes the selection stage of any optimization process very challenging. Because at this point, we need to select some solutions which we feel are the best to move on to the next stage of the process. If you want to learn more, you can watch my longer videos on evolutionary algorithms, multi-objective problems, and the hypervolume indicator.